All right, here we are casting the Samsung Afrika gauntlet match on the LCK game four with Afrika Freaks taking the first two games fairly convincingly and Samsung on the game three with the game even about 23 minutes in taking the Baron and marching right down middle knocking out three full health inhibitors as well uh, no three three full health towers as well as the inhibitor then switching up top lane taking another two towers and the second inhibitor for a massive massive lead over Afrika they went and bought and uh, went and pushed pushed the bottom inhibitor and uh, bing bang boom there the, the game was finished and all, all from a, uh, a very uh, a very effective uh, Baron power play and uh, you you don't see any teams other than SK Telecom doing anything even remarkably, remarkably close uh, so uh, I'm really anxious to see this game four uh, Afrika had the momentum going into game three but with Samsung game game three was was close uh, and they were able to close it out very convincingly uh, so I have to say that the momentum is about even and uh, I can't wait to see some of these early picks. Uh, and very curiously, LeBlanc being taken away from Crown, not wanting to give him a carry. I'm imagining they're banning LeBlanc, Afrika here, because uh, Afrika might first pick a Orianna or, uh, you know, maybe a Corky or a Talia. So I'm thinking that they're going to, in their, in their, uh, in their first rotation, pick... Uh, pick a mid laner, which is going to be very unusual. But no, uh, Afrika going ahead and taking Zaya away to prevent the Zaya Rakan uh, matchup from uh, from Samsung. And uh, wow, it's almost uh, it's almost like I have telepathy here. Uh, that's exactly why you ban LeBlanc uh, in that first rotation is because you want to pick your mid laner. Uh, Talia very very safe uh, for uh, I believe it's uh, Kuro. And uh, and not going to be hard countered with the uh, with the LeBlanc, uh, so uh, also gives uh, Samsung the ability to pick possibly a Cassidin or an Ari or a Corky uh, at any time that they that they want because uh, they're not going to be counter picked now that uh, Afrika has picked their mid laner. So uh, going ahead and rounding out the bot lane, we have the. Uh, Tristana Rakan, which is uh, pretty much one of the probably the mo one of the most meta uh, bot lanes that you could get. This is the 7.15 patch, so it's not the 7.16 patch uh, that uh, North America is playing under. Uh, but here we have the Cho'Gath, which is uh, almost 100% going to be top lane. I uh, I haven't seen a jungle Cho'Gath in a couple of weeks now, so. Okay, so Lulu getting rounded off. So Lulu Zaya is going to be in the bot lane uh, and up against the Rakan uh, Tristana. So just initially, the uh, the Lulu should be able to poke a little heavier uh, than than the Rakan. So should have a little advantage in in lane, but Rakan's going to have the roaming advantage over Lulu. Uh, and uh, both of them are going to have uh, very, very high levels of mid and late game utility. So we have Gragas, first of all, banned, uh, followed by the J4, who is now one of the most played champions in the game. Uh, so that's kind of taking a swing, and uh, it's not just the Korean regions that are playing him, but uh, uh, North America is, and uh, as well as some of the other main regions. Uh, following up, we have Karma, that was played by Crown in, uh, in game three. Uh, so he uh, he had a tough time in the early part of the lane, but then picked up a couple of kills in about the, the 10 minute mark and uh, was able to go on hard from there. Uh, picked up another few kills and uh, was able to uh, give utility for his team. Uh, and then the Elise uh, closing out the uh, the jungle bands. Very quickly, Renekton is picked. Uh, that's looking to get kills against the Cho'Gath. Cho'Gath more looking to stack and be a mid-game presence. Renekton's looking to get kills as well as push down turrets and be the split-pushing monster that he uh, we all know that he can be uh, in the mid-game, in the beginning part of the late game, uh, but uh, he falls off drastically around level 15, level 16. Oh, I love it! The Kha'Zix! 
Not even with the uh, the Lulu on his team, but Kha'Zix being picked up in the jungle blind. And uh, this is a high risk, high reward pick. Uh, not many people play play Kha'Zix. Uh, as if he gets behind early, uh, especially if he gets down in a lever, a level level or two, uh, he really can't one on one anybody, which is what his strength is in the jungle, or possibly catching out uh, catching out a support or someone roaming for a um, uh, for a ward placement. So Syndra being picked up. Uh, Syndra was nerfed slightly in some later patches, but uh, at 715, uh, you know, uh, pretty pretty strong. Not being picked as a first tier mid laner, uh, but definitely as a second tier. Uh, and uh, and Crown uh, uh, most certainly has uh, a number of games with Syndra. And uh, wow, we have a Lulu mid lane. So not not a Karma mid lane uh, like was played by Samsung in game three. Uh, but now uh, we have the uh, the mid lane uh, Lulu looking to buff the Zaya and the Talia, and uh, uh, look, with all the types of dives they have going on with the Renekton and the uh, and the Talia, being able to uh, give some shield, some movement speed, and the uh, ever important uh, ultimate, going to be able to give that survivability and uh, punish. Uh, players that are uh, caught outside of uh, outside of the Reavers' wall by by Talia, uh, and then in case they ever get engaged upon, being able to choose uh, which uh, which engagements they want to fight in uh, by having the Janna uh, with the ever popular uh, Arden sensor. Uh, Janna being one of the uh, the higher win weight rates in the game right now, as well as one of the most picks. So this has kind of taken a turnaround uh, from the uh, engaged supports. Uh, that have been popular prior to this meta, and now it seems to be the shielding supports, uh, both looking to build the Arden Sensor, which at 715 uh, is still extremely strong, still with uh, lots of um, of attack speed bonuses, and uh, and with the uh, with a huge amount of health uh, health drain that you're able to uh, to stack with uh, with levels, and uh, I love uh, I love the the picks. Uh, Let's see, they had the uh, Kazix facing off against the uh, Lulu. That makes me very curious. Is Kazix a some sort of special mid lane pick uh, by Samsung? I I don't really see how that is in this matchup. Wow, it's a Lulu jungle. That can't be right. Wow, Afrika picking Lulu jungle. That had to be a mispick. I uh, I have not watched this game. I would love to hear the announcers to see if this is something that Spirit has been playing, but I have never seen a Lulu jungle before. And uh, I've been playing this game since Season 2 and have been a Lulu main myself for uh, a few of those seasons. So Lulu with Thunderlords picking, picking the, uh, the Smite. So I really don't like this pick. I really would have liked just about any other jungler. Uh, I don't see uh, why you pick Lulu in this case. Uh, as soon as Kha'Zix starts uh, counter jungling, uh, Lulu is going to be able to, you know, possibly get away, but it's not going to be able to do anything to to Kha'Zix, and Kha'Zix should just be able to take Lulu's jungle. So. I don't understand the strategy here by Afrika, and if they lose this game from this strategy, then you're taking this to a game five with Samsung, who's going to be of one of one the last two games, going to have all sorts of momentum on their team. So, really, I, I, the first three games they they played fairly standard, and uh, were able to to win two of them, and the third game was close. Just right up into the the 25 minute mark. So I don't understand why why you uh, you try to go this crazy uh, with this sort of a wild pick uh, when you're doing just fine uh, playing standards. Uh, anyways, we're gonna have to see how uh, Lulu jungle early on works because uh, I have no idea. Uh, but here. It looks like they're going to invade the Kha'Zix jungle, and uh, Tally getting all sorts of damage on the Kha'Zix jungle. He's only got two or three bars left. We have uh, Ruler going in, trying to dive, and trying to pick up the kill to be able to get the stacks, and not able to do so. Core JJ...
going to back off. That's four people bottom uh, at the 2 minute 30 second mark. Wow, you just never see this uh, ever. And not only just in pro games, like you just never see these types of early roams. And First Blood going over for this Lulu jungle, which is exactly what you need when, uh, when you're picking an off-meta support who has trouble taking damage in the, uh, in the jungle. So Lulu's going to be able to go back and uh, get a, uh, a decent buy. Uh, probably going to want to jungle a little bit more. Already at level 3. Uh, going to see if uh, she's able to get up to level 4 before heading back. Probably going to want to go for the, uh, the enchantment upgrade and, uh, and start getting some early vision down, uh, especially against the Kha'Zix. Even though the Kha'Zix has already been uh, counter-jungled a little bit, uh, by his red buff being invaded. Lulu, I'm taking notes here, using the shield on herself, going ahead and doing like an old school, well not old school, uh, you know, when UOL was doing it, the Twisted Fate type of jungle, making sure to leash out these, uh, these wolves and to keep firing, moving back, firing, moving back, doing the old stutter step uh, to prevent taking as much damage as possible. And uh, going right back at it, Kha'Zix trying to uh, get some pressure still against the Lulu, probably hoping that she uh, she went back. Uh, but here, uh, Renekton's going to find out this uh, control ward and uh, going to quickly destroy that and head back up top farm before he uh, misses any any more. So scuttle crab being taken. Oh, did Spirit grab that? He got level four off it. She absolutely grabbed that. This is the Lulu who, even though. Uh, you would think would be heavily disadvantaged uh, in the jungle matchup, uh, invading Kha'Zix early, as well as being able to take away this Scuttle Crab that the Kha'Zix did all the hard work and lost a control ward over. So really everything going well for Spirit and Afrika at this point. I'm loving to see this. This is just so entertaining. And uh, believe me, if I see this work, I'm going to be trying to. St I'm going to be trying this in the jungle. I, I will pledge and. Doesn't have to be with any of my close friends' games. Maybe I can just uh, hop into a uh, a little draft game and, and and queue that up myself, as I'm sure a lot of people are going to do after seeing this performance. But uh, uh, I'm loving it, and uh, went for the wisp and a control ward, uh, and uh, absolutely the warding enchantment. So getting lots of vision. Already sweeping sweeping over to the sweeping ward, and uh, and is going to be going for the uh, runic echoes, uh, very, uh, very exciting, and uh, I can't wait to see this. Going to be it's a, uh, a infernal dragon here for the first dragon, and definitely Lulu is not the right type of uh, of hero champion to be uh, to be soloing that. Uh, though Kazix can be uh, at level five, which uh, he did just turn right now. Lulu probably going to be looking to gank. Putting a little bit of vision, but uh, Kazix does see that, that uh, Lulu's early vision is directly on top of his own and uh, is not going to be moving into that area. It's probably going to want to be keeping a little bit dark. Janna going ahead and taking a little bit of damage from Rakan just to get that control ward out. And with the shield not taking too much, I believe Kazix is... Uh, okay, he was seen because there was a ping going down, uh, but here we have him going on to Kramer, uh, all kinds of damage, uh, but the Lulu shield being able to get Kramer to safety, and they're just going to back off of this, and I don't see Samsung going for the dragon just yet, even though they have a little advantage with the support being sent back to base, don't see them taking this 7 minute dragon uh, just yet. <laughs> and Lulu going ahead and smiting to get back to full health. Continuing on the jungle route, looking to get to 6. Uh, Ambition is going to be getting to 6 a little bit quicker than Spirit uh, in the jungle. Uh, so we're going to have to see at that uh, break point to see if, uh, if Kha'Zix is going to be able to lay down a kill uh, with uh, that um, ultimate that's going to be coming up uh, quite shortly. Possibly just uh, one or two camps. Definitely as he finishes off his top side of the jungle is going to be able to get that camp. And we're looking at the farm scores. Uh, mid lane, we have Crown on Syndra. A little bit of a farm lead, about 10 up uh, over on Kuro. 
And uh, jungle matchup pretty even, top and bottom, all pretty even. Uh, just the Janna has 13 farm. It's very curious how she has that many farm. I've never seen Janna with such a high farm total this early, so I don't know what's up with that. But their combined farm is up uh, by about 8 uh, over Samsung. So Kuro doing his best to kind of push waves, uh, has the, has six, uh, is going to try to head back, but Crown's not going to let him. You're in my house now, says Syndra, and uh, Talia just has to keep clearing waves until, uh, until Syndra wants to let him head back. So this, uh, this top lane going for a slight farm advantage for Renekton is not that big of a deal for... Uh, Cho'Gath, you just want to be uh, getting some early stacks. You want to be having uh, about three to five stacks before you, you teleport anywhere, just so that you have some of these additional hit points, so you're able to uh, fight um, some of these champions with, uh, with big ultimates doing big damage. Dominus used by Renekton, getting Cho'Gath down to a quarter health, but Cho'Gath has uh, all sorts of ways uh, to uh, get healed up. He went Doran Shield instead of refillable uh, corrupting potion, uh, so it's not going to be able not to have that type of um, of sustain uh, going ahead with that uh, that build path. Should be able to still heal up, as you can see. Uh, at one third health, was able to get to two thirds health, and backing off, not wanting to get dove. Talia is looking uh, to ultimate in uh, hard engage in bottom. Uh, we have uh, Rakan uh, going in and uh, getting some early damage against the Janna. Sorry, not sorry, the Tristana. And we have Kha'Zix uh, now starting the Dragon uh, with the red buff. So most certainly at level 7, uh, Kha'Zix is going to be able to solo this. So no need for his team to help. They just have to keep uh, an eye on their respective laners just to make sure that they're not roaming. And uh, Kha'Zix should get this free dragon, uh, which when you're Lulu, you're not necessarily looking to uh, fight for this first dragon. Uh, just mostly trying to get your lanes ahead, trying to get some early pressure, maybe some early vision. But uh, after seeing this uh, infernal dragon go down, uh, we'll look to uh, possibly defend the, uh, the Rift Herald. Uh, with, uh, with, a, with a two on two or a three on three, but it's not the most important part. Mostly looking to uh, stay up ahead in levels, or even with levels rather, and focusing on the lanes. Definitely doing a pretty hard farming Lulu for how you'd think this would play off, and like almost like predicting it, being able to scout out this uh, this Kazix ward before it was even placed, and uh, now should be able to clean it. Uh, and going to head back after taking out that vision. Gold lead is at a thousand for Afrika, which makes sense with the first uh, the first tower, uh, but the early important first Infernal Dragon over towards Samsung. So overall, uh, fairly even, and uh, both teams are are looking to take this into the mid game. You're looking for a scaling advantage. I'd have to give it towards Samsung as uh, Cho'Gath scales better than Renekton. And uh, Tristana scales better than Zaya. Reaver's Wall going in, going to get the, the Cho'Gath out. Flash coming out. He's going to head back under turret, which is maybe not necessarily where he wants to be. He thought that if he went all the way straight down, that Talia was just going to be able to chase him out. And uh, a couple of tower shots towards the Renekton. Uh, that's going to be all for naught. First tower heading over to Afrika uh, so that the, they get the early gold lead, which, uh, again, as Lulu, is what you want to be doing. Uh, first objective, not necessarily that important in the neutral uh, areas of the map, but the uh, getting getting these these lanes ahead and getting some early pressure definitely important. Uh, Renekton going ahead and finishing off that uh, black cleaver uh, before even boots at all. So most definitely going to be able to take this out. Going to get the shields to prevent any sort of excess damage happening. Talia getting the vision, just saying, hey, I see you, Syndra. And by the way, I'm going to come back to lane and get some of this farm. I imagine they're going to let Marn have this as, 
Oh, no, they're going to let the jungler. It's pretty much been universal where the jungler's been taking uh, the Rift Herald. So I guess because uh, the jungler has a better option of whether to go top, mid, or bottom lane uh, with the Rift Herald, whereas the top laner is only going to be going top. And so can only put the Rift Herald top or possibly mid, uh, or we'll have to do a lane swap to get it in bottom. So really a lot more options for the, uh, for the jungler. But I just would have thought with uh, how well uh, Renektidus started off, that he would want those early backs for the next four minutes, possibly trying to get a, a half uh, item a lead on the uh, on the Cho'gath, uh, do, like with, with that with that early back, and uh, possibly try to get a kill. But that's not the type of game they're playing. They're going to be playing a tower game, and that means handing it over to Spirit. And uh, look at that fast back. So the Runic Echoes was finished. Wait, that looks like a Cinderhawk. Hmm. Yeah. Probably Runic Echoes. Anyways, it's hard to tell. But another Wisp built, uh, Boots, and uh, two Control Wards. So look at all you junglers. Uh, you need Control Wards. If you're not buying at least one, then you're not really doing your job uh, in the jungle. And that's right. It's definitely the support and the jungler's job to ward, not just the support. Uh, if you don't think so, watch Korea. They're the best, and they do it all the time. A uh, minute and 52 seconds here on the next dragon. Uh, still lots of time. Uh, looks like waves are going to try to get pushed out. Uh, possibly look for a three on two somewhere. Not really anything that's being pinged out as of yet. Uh, they see Renekton roaming on the top. Gank going in towards Talia, but not able to get anything meaningful, just as slow with the red buff, and that's not enough to uh, to get enough damage on Talia. Items are looking, so the Haunting Guy is made for Talia, as well as the Mercury Tread, so going uh, fairly defensive, uh, not going for the Rush of the Merla Namicon, or the Banshee's Veil, like we've seen traditionally. Uh, so Curl with a, uh, a different build, than, uh, than what we're used to, and you just make you wonder whether he's overwhelmed by the uh, by the situation. Uh, Crown, uh, although uh, did look extremely well in the first half of the season, uh, hasn't shown up to his potential in the last part. And uh, and Kuro not wanting to make that mistake, not wanting to have the Syndra get an early first kill and get that crazy burst potential like we know Syndra can get with uh, with an early two or three kills. The uh, Lulu getting the uh, Boots of Lucidity, which is not surprising. Uh, Lulu is, uh, definitely prioritizes cooldown uh, reduction way more uh, than uh, most champions and able to get those shields, those speeds, well, speed or polymorph, depending how you want to use it, and the ever-important ultimate. So I'm going to go ahead and get this mid-tower down, and they're not going to press their luck uh, by trying to continue down the mid lane. But what they are going to do is go towards this uh, Infernal Dragon and look to even this up. I expect them to start this right away with, uh, with the Kha'Zix in the top lane. They're going to be able to see Kha'Zix soon. They're going to know it's safe. So there they see the Kha'Zix top lane. You should be starting the dragon immediately in bot lane. Uh, Marin getting dove. Cho'Gath taking all kinds of damage. Flashing back under the turret. Getting eaten by Kuve. And this tower is going to get some damage on it very shortly. It's getting pinged out. But that is by uh, Afrika, who was able to, to even the dragon count out. 2,000 gold uh, ahead for Afrika. Still lots of health left on this top turret. Uh, but that's going to be very short-lived uh, with these two champions uh, hitting it. But Reaver's Wall used. It's now three on one on top. Uh, top tower, three quarters health. Lulu going up to support, and Samsung not wanting to press uh, their, that sort of uh, uh, objective uh, with reinforcements coming from Afrika. So good job by Afrika getting the objective, even though they lost... Um, uh, Marin in the top lane, the, the tower only got going down to half and uh, still be able to maintain that 2,000 gold lead and even up the dragons uh, with the infernal dragons at one apiece.
So right now, with, uh, with Samsung, they should be looking to slow this game down. The, net, the dragon was just taken off. Baron's not up for another two minutes. You just want to farm. You don't want to push too far up in top lane uh, you, you, or, or in bot lane uh, where uh, there's towers missing on either side. You just want to go ahead, do just exactly what Ruler's doing, clear the jungle, get some safe farm, get up to uh, the, the 22, 21 minute mark before you want to have a massive team fight again. That's going to be around when uh, teams are going to be starting to ward for Dragon. That's when you're going to want to be putting pressure on the mid and the bottom turret, starting to ward up, playing that ever-important vision game, and look towards that. Uh, that next dragon and that team fight when your team's going to be uh, all that stronger again They have the higher uh, scaling comp with the Cho'Gath with the Tristana and uh, They They could use a couple of more levels Renekton's at his strongest right now here level 12 12 13 pretty strong for Renekton, but falls off drastically after that going uh, Going full offensive here with the black cleaver, and it's going to be going for uh, Knight of the Blade of the Rune King here with that build water start. So not prioritizing tank at all, looking to try to be able to duel one person at a time. That person could be the Cho'Gath with this righteous glory, not looking for a uh, one on one build uh, as opposed to Renekton who is going one on one build. So Renekton can be Cho'Gath in a fight right now. Uh, and as you can see, has that level on him as well as the dueling item, whereas Cho'Gath is looking for team fights. So again, just looking for the safe farm. Nothing big is going to happen. You don't need to worry about a 20 minute dragon uh, as long as your team doesn't get uh, smashed uh, with like a two person disadvantage. Uh, just get a couple of levels. Uh, your items are not for this, these fighting. Uh, your items are not to one-on-one -on -one Renekton. Don't try it. Here, a little two-on-one -on -one action going on. Dominus heading down. We have the Reaver's Wall, and Talia decided, oh, I'm going to back off of that uh, just at the last second with uh, Renekton going down. And so, uh, which you could have played safe, uh, not necessarily going safe, uh, going ahead and uh, and get, taking out that Renekton, who's pushed a little bit farther up without any sort of first-tier turret protection, uh, wanting that fight against uh, Cho'Gath. But when he engaged, uh, Cho'Gath was, wasn't there alone. He was there with a friend. His name is Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix now at 0, zero 2 uh, with the uh, Warrior enchantment finished and the Serrated Dirk. He's looking for that second offensive item and looking for that lethality. Dragging up in two minutes, so it's going to be right uh, at about two minutes, uh, 22 minutes, 45 seconds that this next dragon uh, is coming up, and just look out for the fireworks there. Exactly where you want to be as Tristana, going ahead and bursting out this tower. Rakan going ahead and saving. Tristana, they, they don't want any piece of this. They got the tower. You just want to go ahead and back off. Maybe do a buy or get a little bit of the jungle. Going to go ahead and decide to buy. Three on one on Crown. Crown using the ultimate on Janna. Janna with the ultimate being able to uh, save herself with the, the shield uh, just barely. Without that shield, it did look like she was going down. Uh, Arden sensor on her as well as on the Rakan. Uh, just goes to show you how close uh, that was. Uh, because uh, Sindra knew she was dead at that point. It was just looking for a trading kill. There's not going to be a Baron uh, at this point with only the support going down. I mean, the uh, with, with, with only the mid lane going down for, for Samsung. It's a little too early for that. And really, they don't have, uh, on Afrika's side, the perfect uh, Baron uh, taking team, as well as they don't have any Mountain Drakes just yet. Uh, so just going to look to uh, continue putting pressure. They have top lane pushed. They have two people in mid, and they have Talia solo pushing on bot lane. Uh, I don't know if Talia is going to go ahead and push the tower, but it's definitely going to push the next wave. Uh, two members coming down. They're, they're going to try to look for an easy, a little bit of easy gold here, looking to put three members down. But Zaya is backing off at the last moment, and Janna is thinking the better of it as well and saying to Talia, hey, follow me. I'll guide you to safety. Action going on in mid lane. Dragon's up in five seconds. 
Freak opinion in. They have four members there. They're going to look to try to burst this down. Cho'Gath is in the bot lane, moving up to respond, but he's not going to get there in time. It's going to be an easy mountain dragon for Afrika. Samsung not responding with the uh, Baron take themselves. Instead, uh, going to look to gank top lane once again for Renekton. Uh, Marin, poor Marin, uh, is not even that far up in his own uh, in his own side of the map. Uh, but his team does land a Mountain Dragon. Going to look to put a little pressure in mid lane. Uh, there are pings uh, going down around uh, Baron, but they can't conceivably be taking that objective with three members of Afrika pushing down the mid turret. And just look with this Infernal Dragon and with the uh, Mountain Dragon being able to get uh, this tower down fairly quickly. And uh, shields upon shields, Janna and uh, Lulu is going to be more than enough to uh, get this... Uh, uh, Zaya uh, for, uh, for into safety. Uh, that's two Arden sensors now on Afrika, and I, and I, and I guess I can see why uh, Afrika might be going for this Lulu, because look, you can get two Arden sensors on the same team. So with such a broken item as Arden sensor is in the 715 patch, now you have two on your team. And I, and I have seen this uh, with uh, with Samsung in game three, uh, going that Karma, being able to build Arden Sensor. I believe he went its second item, uh, going the Athene's Holy Grail first. Uh, so here, Afrika taking a, a little bit of a page out of Samsung's book and saying, hey, we can do you one better. We'll ban Karma and pick Lulu. Uh, but this time not for mid lane, as she's traditionally been played uh, when not in support, uh, but throwing her in jungle and uh, not skipping a beat. Uh, against this uh, Kha'Zix, and getting that early kill uh, was really, really enormous uh, for uh, Lulu, getting that early level and that early item to be able to continue to jungle and only be 13 CS down at 25 minutes up against a Kha'Zix who thrives in the jungle, doing well her himself at 0, zero 3 uh, but with Lulu not dying yet, uh, definitely showing up, and I have to hand it to Spirit, being able to play this off-meta pick extremely well. This next, uh, this next three or four minutes is uh, absolutely on the edge of uh, edge of my seat type of action. Uh, mid lane looking to get pushed by Samsung, but Afrika has it all the way pushed down uh, down to the base. Uh, any sort of Baron by Afrika could mean inhibitor turrets. Uh, this game with uh, with this with this Lulu pick is so thrilling, and uh, I, I really I really found it hard to predict what's going to be going on next. Gold ever so close. At 1800, an advantage for Afrika with an advantage of a Mountain Drake. It's gonna, they're going to see, you're really a Samsung. You can't be giving away any sort of position around the Baron. Uh, Afrika will just go ahead and take it, uh, putting the double the double shields onto, onto Zaya. Oh, Kuro getting caught out in the jungle. And Kha'Zix, huge, being able to get that uh, isolation bonus damage onto Talia. Put top lane getting pushed. It's going to be a tier two being taken, and uh, Freak is getting to be put on the back foot. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Cho'Gath and Kuve pushing on the bottom, and this is going to be the time uh, the time when Kuve is going to start to be slowly get an advantage over Renekton. And uh, what a turn of events! Uh, for some reason, Talia going uh, into the dark jungle uh, alone with uh, with no support, no wards. And uh, really for no reason. So just a little bit of a brain fart, a little bit of, uh, of a uh, curious type of, uh, type of maneuver. And uh, this uh, takes all sorts of tempo away from uh, Afrika, who now has to converge at four people around the mid turret just to be able to hold it. Now they do hold this mid turret, which has all kinds of map pressure. Afrika still does have the map pressure advantage, even though Samsung has a top lane turret pushed uh, all the way to the... Uh, to the to the base, but with um, Samsung having the mid pushed all the way to, uh, with Afrika having the, the mid of Samsung's pushed all the way uh, to their base, uh, they're able to get a lot more movement around the map uh, just merely by the having their mid lane turrets gone as opposed to top lane. So let's take a moment and take uh, take take a peek at the uh, the gold uh, differential here. Uh, it's 400 only for Afrika, and uh, Cho'Gath going the uh, Gargoyle Stormplate, uh, already having the Righteous Glory built for a long time, but finishing up the Warmogs now has three tank items, and if you don't kill this uh, this Cho'Gath 
If you let him uh, regen for about five seconds outside of a fight, he's going to be back at three quarters to full life. And uh, and you're not going to want to have to kill this uh, Cho'Gath twice. He's stacking. He's laughing. And as soon as he uh, as he gets out of a fight and starts this regen, he's going to be back at you with full life. So uh, really, uh, Afrika, when they decide to focus him, uh, need to be able to burst him down uh, or it's going to be bad news bears uh, for this team. So I really like at this point I really like Samsung with their scaling comp and uh, with a slight little tempo advantage over Afrika uh, to go ahead and, and bust this game open. But it's going to be fought over either this Dragon or this Baron. I, 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 don't, I don't see Afrika defending this uh, mid turret with uh, Lulu being chunked down to about 10% health. I, oh, Lulu's deciding to go in. I could be wrong. A little bit of a disjointed action here, but they were thinking about going five on five. I was just waiting for the engage, and it didn't seem to happen. Uh, wave clear uh, is not the best, but we have Rakan with the grand entrance being able to go and get the kill on Tuzaya is Cho'Gath. Uh, I'm not sure if he's got the chomp down or not. Uh, yep, the uh, the chomp was used and was able to pick up that ever important stack. Just visually looking, it looks like he's got about seven stacks there, just by knowing Cho'Gath's size. And they're moving towards the Baron. I don't necessarily think that they're going to take it, but they are going to be putting wards down, and they're going to be starting the Baron. This is being seen. Uh, they have full vision. Afrika uh, should have four members to respond, but with uh, Renekton all the way back at the base, and. Uh, and Talia being uh, being pretty weak, not able to uh, to sufficiently uh, counter engage, but they're just happy enough to have uh, Samsung not go in hard on this Baron. And uh, believe me, if uh, Cho'Gath's chomp was up, they would have went and tried to finish that off because uh, his um, his bite is doing much more than the uh, than the smite damage is doing, probably by about three four hundred. Uh, so in combination with a smite chomp or a chomp smite. It's very difficult to nearly impossible uh, for Lulu to be able to go in and steal that. Uh, Wind Dragon up, but uh, this is not where the fight is going to be won or lost. And uh, top laners are now pushing waves over in the bottom wave, uh, wave uh, bottom tower, <clears throat> and both have TP. Uh, Renekton just looking to pick up fire whenever he go, wherever he can. Uh, Blade of the Rune King now finished. Gargoyle's Stone Plate finally finished, uh, and uh, his first is, means his first defensive item, uh, and he should be able to withstand a little bit of uh, engagement uh, by Samsung, uh, but not not poke. He's only able to dive in, use his Gargoyle's Stone Plate, take some shots, and then and then uh, do some damage, and then get out. Afrika landing this dragon, uh, movement speed, uh, fairly useful for their team with uh, Renekton. Lulu, yeah, pretty much everyone it's, it, it's useful for. So although not regarded as the strongest dragon, uh, for their team comp, they're most certainly going to be taking that with a thank you, please, we'll take another. Uh, well, let, let's look at the gold totals of Samsung. Uh, up, uh, let's see, 1,500. So pretty even. Going ahead and starting this Baron, they have the control ward down. The uh, Freak of Freaks do not see this. They're going to be having to give this up. And a steal attempt by uh, Talia is uh, met with a <laughs> Tristana getting the Baron. So neither the Chomp nor the Smite landing uh, against the Baron. And I really would have liked to see a Cho'Gath pick up that extra stack. But uh, he's feeling like this, uh, this next team fight could be the game and wants to save his ultimate uh, to finish off uh, a, a team member on Afrika and not use it just to get a uh, epic monster stack uh, to get ever more tanky. Looking like eight or nine stacks these have. It's getting caught out on the wrong side of the Reaver's wall. Going ahead and use Gargoyle Stone Plate, but Afrika knows that they don't want to be engaging on Cho'Gath with any sort of their valuable abilities. Just take a look at Kuve and how fast his hit points are going to increase now that he's not hit. And there, he was taken uh, taken down to two-thirds health, and he's already right back up. Knock up, uh, not being able to uh, to knock anyone up because of the Banshee's Veil. 
And uh, this tower is not going to be long for this world with Tristata poking on it. Three members of Afrika immediately responding, uh, but this might be too little too late for their outer towers as uh, Samsung's going to keep the pressure on uh, while Afrika is trying to defend. And there's still a long, long time left on this Baron. Still approximately a minute and ten seconds. Uh, Elder Dragon spawning a little bit, uh, probably in about three minutes, two and a half, three minutes. But uh, there might, there's very well going to be an inhibitor down uh, if uh, if this top tower is left alone for any length of time. Kazix pushing alone on bottom. I would have liked to see Cho'Gath pushing this bot lane, uh, but uh, hell, you know, uh, Kazix is able to push it a little quicker, able to get that tower along with the bound up minions and good damage from the Talia onto the. Uh, Kazix alleviating some of this pressure and this just might be the uh, pressure that they need uh, taken off uh, just in time so that they don't lose any inhibitors on this Baron and really not losing an inhibitor is, is a win uh, for Afrika. Mid tower getting pushed, Cho'Gath in there hard, grand entrance uh, used but counter engaged by Janna. Mid tower is taken down. That's probably going to be what Samsung's looking for, and they're going to look to to head back and uh, get some some vision or into the jungle. Uh, but we're going to have to see uh, how much longer they want to press this. This uh, is Baron. Uh, probably has about 30 seconds left, maybe a little bit less. And this tower is gone now. Both towers and the top and mid lane have been taken out in the base. Uh, damage already on the top inhibitor. Last person you want to be damaging here is this Cho'Gath. Gargoyle Stoneplate used and uh, just able to get out. It's going to go ahead and uh, head back to base this Cho'Gath because he's going to be able to teleport in. Here he comes onto a minion in top wave. Top inhibitor going down. Uh, not only this, but Kha'Zix able to get the bottom tower. They're going for three inhibitors here. Baron is almost gone. It's going to be any second now that this Baron going down. Mid inhibitor down. And they're going for the third. This is going to be lights out if they're able to land this, this next inhibitor. Baron go, just went down. Cho'Gath's in taking all kinds of damage. They just can't do anything for this Cho'Gath. Two for one being able to be traded uh, in favor of Samsung. But that's after all, uh, two, three of their inhibitors have already been done. Yeah, they're going to be able to clean up this fight. What does that mean? Wow, Samsung, with these Barons, just being able to break open games. It's, it's perfect textbook Baron play, uh, keeping it even until until you get uh, an easy Baron take, uncontested, and being able to push uh, for the win. Uh, and without any sort of real risk, they, they push three waves, and as soon as anyone responds, they fall back, regroup, keep pushing. Repeat, 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 and with the Baron minions uh, being so much slower to uh, to go down, uh, really there was nothing that a free could, could do except clear waves and have their structures damaged. Three dragons up to one, uh, but losing that 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 first Baron was crucial. And uh, you know Lulu did a good job, but he just did not uh, did not have uh, the the members to to buff. Zaya did have uh, did do fairly well. Did, did have some items, but wasn't that massive hyper carry uh, that you need to be buffing with a Janna Lulu? Uh, really, if you had let's say a Kogma in that place, uh, I know Kogma Janna is a uh, extremely weak lane. But if you can get out of lane and you can get this Kogma to even or to slightly ahead with those double buffs, those double shields. Just disastrous for the other team if uh, if you can keep that Kogma alive, and it's just not the same with Zaya. Got to give the credit where credits due. Uh, good job, Samsung, playing Barons excellently. Can't wait to cast this next game. I'm gonna have to roll right into it. Uh, these games are just excellent. Game five, looking for the full sweep. Uh, Samsung Galaxy Africa Freaks here in the gauntlet of the LCK 2017. Uh, regional finals uh, here at the end of the season. Ravixel, like, sub subscribe. I do it live. I do it online. I love casting. I love hosting. I'm going to keep doing it, and we're going to keep having fun.